More Heart Than Talent Radio. More Heart Than Talent Radio is brought to you today by my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. If you find yourself struggling to find your breakthrough and frustrated with your results, join my Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle Coaching Program. It's a private video coaching call every other week where I'll be teaching the skill of the week followed by coaching. JCIC members one-on-one live for observation. All calls are recorded and posted in the JCIC members area. Members will have access to the private JCIC Facebook group where they can ask questions, interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, the other JCIC members, and receive any support required in their breakthrough process. When you enroll, you'll receive the new members welcome kit, which includes my new Breakthrough Factor audio program, my Breakthrough Accelerator course, my digital coaching program, and so much more, all for $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today. Good afternoon, everyone. Jeffrey Combs, president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018. Welcome to the More Heart Than Talent live here this afternoon. My absolute privilege and pleasure going on to month three of doing this this video live in the afternoon. 21 years ago, this this started off as a mastermind call in the afternoon at 5 o'clock Eastern. And so here we are, full circle. Now it is a video. So I see a lot of people are coming on here. So we're going to move right into the inspirational portion of today's call. I have a couple of really quick announcements, then we'll cover the content. First of all, if you have not taken advantage of a free 20-minute coaching session, I offer those. You can receive one of those. You can receive a free a free call by inboxing me on Facebook, and I will get back with you immediately within the next 24 hours or so. Just send me your number and what you seek to achieve from a free 20-minute call with me. This this next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking at a private event. The following Saturday, I will be in Spartanburg, South Carolina with Bridget Bartley. Then on October 20th, I will be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So those are the two spots, two places where you can see me speak live in the next couple of weeks. And then in November, I'll be right back out in Orange County, California, and I will also be in Terrytown, New York. So those are the next four speaking places that you can see a live one day, more heart than talent event. Also with the lives, we're doing a Facebook Live, so there's some good content for you to be able to capture there. In the inspirational portion of today's video, I'm going to be covering the topic of healing shame and guilt, and then moving into a state of awareness called forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very, very underdeveloped, misunderstood word that very few authors write about. As a matter of fact, there are very few books on the topic. Colin Tippin wrote a great book in the late 1990s, early 2000s called Radical Forgiveness. There's also a workbook with that, but other than that, there's not a lot of content on that. Forgiveness is another level of being able to let go. As you separate feelings from events, move into a state of consciousness, meaning that you live in a no state, you live in a now state, you're living in an aware state, you understand, then you'll stop trying to make sense of situations. Many people live in it, it doesn't make sense, I'm trying to make sense of it, does that make sense? Well, making sense is about creating pennies, because that's what it means, making sense. And as a business owner, you're not into making sense, you're there to create profit. Sense comes from your analytical egoic mind that constantly wants to know how do I. As you let go of the how do I state, move into I am, I am committed, I decide. As you move into that state, now you're anchored in a place called consciousness. Consciousness is allows you to access the web of content and the web of knowledge that elevates you above anxiety, fear, and doubt, puts you in a much more aware state where you know. And when you know that you know, you won't doubt what you know and you won't live in anxiety, fear, or doubt. 
You won't worry about worrying. If worry is a way of life, then you will continue to worry to fulfill a neurochemical craving you're emotionally addicted to that is overwhelmed. Now, as you start to understand cause and effect, why you do what you do, there becomes an advantage because you now have the ability to separate a feeling from an event. That is how you create recovery. Recovery is a constant state of education, of learning, of letting go, of being able to better understanding and awareness of why you do what you do, but most importantly, predictability. As you understand how predictable human beings are, then you will be able to release some of the emotions that keep you doing the same thing over and over. And then you'll stop trying to make sense of things. And when you understand predictability, that isn't sense, that's that's no that's knowing and the more you know you let go of sense so on the topic for today's call i'm covering the the two terms guilt and shame now that this week's topic i want to assist you with guilt is why why i did was bad so guilt is is versed in situations that you hold on to that you made mistakes transgressions shame and guilt are similar energies but distinctly different Guilt is more about what people have done to guilt you than you feel guilty. And I feel guilty. I feel selfish. I would feel selfish if I succeeded. I would feel selfish if I made $100,000 or more. This is how guilt robs you of the ability to be and stay successful in free enterprise and other endeavors. Guilt is an emotion, a very heavy emotion, that vibrates and transmutes out at a very low level of emotional vibrational energy. Guilt and shame are right above apathy and grief. Those are the four lowest energies that you will transmute a feeling. Shame is when you have done something bad and you hold on to something bad and then you hold on to the story about how you were bad and what you did and then you live in shame and then you live in a very low energy like this, not wanting to be noticed, not wanting to be seen, not sure if you could put yourself out there. As you begin to have a better understanding of why you do what you do, then you're not the mind-body connection to the events that create the emotions that create anxiety. Now, if guilt and shame are an anxiety and they're very low levels of energy, well, it would make sense, wouldn't it? Or it would behoove you, or you would begin to figure it out. Well, that's unfortunately not going to get you to the land of promise. As you begin to let go, letting go is not about making sense. Letting go is separating feelings from events. Letting go does not respond to sense. Letting go responds to an emotion. As you become emotional about letting go, as emotional as you were about holding on, holding on keeps you in control. Letting go allows you to access consciousness. Letting go separates you from anxiety, fear, and doubt and elevates you into awareness. Now you know. When you know, it's a different level of intelligence and emotional intelligence. That level of intelligence is called trust. That level of trust is, means you're able to trust self. That self is also esteem, which is regard for. So it becomes reciprocal. It's shapeless, formless. It's an energy that allows you to go anywhere and know. So if the plane is canceled, you know that you'll find an equal or better opportunity because you know and have know-how of how to create the outcome before it happens. So you can be and stay in a relaxed body. And, but if you're in guilt and shame, you're transmuting energy at a very low rate of emotion. And it's that low rate of emotion that gives off a corresponding response that will attract other like-minded people in guilt and shame to either violate you or join you in your journey in life. And so this keeps you in a very low state of, of anxiety. And that anxiety just hovers right above apathy. And as you begin to have a better understanding of why you do what you do, now you have the responsibility, the ability to respond, a new set of reflexes. Rather than being tight like this, you start to become relaxed. Now, let's take a look at guilt and shame. Shame is I, myself, am bad, where guilt is what I did is bad. I, myself, means that I, I created a transgression, and that that's a different situation than what I did. So it's self and what it's outside of self that creates the separation between guilt and shame. The mind-body connection to guilt and shame is it's very common to grow up in a family where guilt is used to control the family. You're guilted into feeling bad about money. You're guilted into feeling bad about situations. And you're taught certain situations that by your 18, you spent 20,000 20, meals with the wrong financial planners.
Now, now as you say, if you, as you start to develop a better understanding of letting go, now if you grow up in a family where guilt is used to control you, then it's going to be your responsibility to understand by stepping into your power, some people may be upset with you, and then they will do what they've already done, use guilt to attempt to control you. Now, this also happens in jobs. It happens in many places. When you're leaving your job, some of your coworkers, some of your employers, your employees will say things to you like, wow, I hope you make it out there. It's really difficult. What are we going to do without you? The place isn't going to be the same. I can't believe you're moving across the country. We'll never get to see the grandkids. So unfortunately, this is how a lot of people communicate their communication with you to affect your outcome. These are called dream stealers. These are called emotional vampires, energy suckers, a whole series of names that mean typically they derive their pleasure and their energy by robbing you of yours. As you have a better understanding of this, and you start to let go of your guilt. Now, it's very important you understand this, that in this, L-E-A-V-I-N-G, leaving behind. Now, in leaving behind, now, you, you're not going to leave people behind. Here's what's going to happen. They are going to stay where they are. They're going to stay where they are. You're not going to leave them behind. They're going to definitely stay where they are. They're going to stay where they are because they're going to be who they are. And if they're going to be who they are, then they're going to continue to perpetuate the same communication style, the same set of feelings to control you by using guilt to control you. As you understand that you're no longer in control of being out of control, and as you begin to let go of the illusion of control, then you're not going to worry about other people's feelings. And this is what many people do. They're guilty. They feel bad about hurting someone else, while the person they feel bad about hurting is really hurting them. And this is the guilt that's reciprocal that creates the guilt resentment syndrome. And if you're in this syndrome, there's a high probability that a lot of your actions or inactions are based on being and feeling guilty. As I said earlier, guilt is a very, very heavy emotion that absolutely sucks the life out of you. Now, the mind-body connection to guilt and event are going to be the events. And the events that shape your feelings are going to determine your emotional state. So if you're in anxiety, fear, and doubt, that means you're in anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, overwhelmed feelings, grief, and apathy. And this is why many people have challenges prospecting, because they don't want to bother someone. They feel guilty about making that phone call. They don't want their friends and family to think they're trying to sell them something because they're too guilty to make that phone call. They're too guilty to ask. They're too guilty to present because the story they tell themselves. Well, guilt is not only based on guilt, but in this situation, it's based on rejection. The average American does not want to be rejected by putting themselves at risk. So to avoid risk, they will avoid failing. And by avoiding failing, oftentimes they feel guilty. By feeling guilty, now they perpetuate guilt, resentment, abandonment, rejection, and a whole set of other emotions that continues to perpetuate the same set of feelings over and over, creating an outcome that leads to disappointment. Now, being not appointed, unfortunately for many people, is a way of life. And these are the type of people that also worry all the time. I'm always worried. I'm worried about offending someone, making a mistake, getting in trouble, saying the right thing, saying the wrong thing, failing, succeeding. This becomes a story that intoxicates emotionally and overwhelms neurochemically a large percent of society because they are predictable. Now, as you decide not to be predictable and you understand predictability, you are in a place called advantage. Advantage meaning that you have the vantage point. You're able to know, see, sense, feel, touch, and understand. That is what consciousness is. Consciousness is not about making sense. Consciousness is about a state of being called love. And as you start to love self, have a, have a regard for others, start to feel exceptional about your opportunity and free enterprise, start to feel the love, be the love, now you're transmuting it. This is called charisma. And that kind of charisma walks into a room and it, it, it ennobles, E-N-O-B-L-E, -E, meaning it lifts people up. People feel you, you're iconic, you have charisma, you have energy, 
you're flowing, you're in a state of being called love. Now, in that kind of love, it becomes very infectious because other people want to be who you are. They want to touch you. They want to feel you. They want to join your team, join your culture, because they feel you have magic. In reality, what you have is esteem with consciousness in a very relaxed body, in a state of being where you're not anxious, worried, or in doubt. So when, when you live in this state, people are going to go, how did you do it? How did you do it? What was the magic? What was that one magical, mythical breakthrough that you had? And I will tell you this, this situation. There was no magic. The magic was in me. And the, the reality of the situation is, is that one day I reached a place called the pain is great enough. It is not the way you want to break through, but it's how I broke through in 1996 because the threshold of pain was great enough. And I was no longer willing to continue to be the mind-body connection to the events that created my alcoholism and drug abuse. Now, as I began to, to move into a place called commitment and move into a place called decision, now I'm no longer guilty about the transgressions from the past because I start to practice forgiveness. In the 12-step programs, this is taught of radical forgiveness, rigorous honesty. Terms like this are used to be able to provoke you to move out of a state called denial. And as you uplift yourself out of denial, you begin to let go of guilt. Many people stay in familiar family situations. They work for their parents. They let their parents move in with them, their grandparents, any multitude of situations. They take, they over-obligate, do too much for others to fulfill their feelings of low self-esteem. Esteem means they have a very low regard for self and a higher regard for others because they can over-obligate themselves, doing more for others, living in codependency, and then that way they can deflect how low their esteem is. Oftentimes, this is perpetuated by guilt. If you want to control others and you want to take care of others and you want to let them know about all these great situations going on and you want to get involved in their life and over-obligate yourself and overwhelm yourself, well, that's your call, but it's versed in a place called codependence. That means enabling, over-obligating, doing too much, creating expectations for others that they can't fulfill so that they can fulfill your disappointment. So you want to learn from the past of this. As you begin to learn from the past and be and stay present, as you have a better understanding, you can see the past in a place called metacognition. It means you can see it. You can sense it. You stop saying, my memory is a blur. I don't understand. My, I, my whole childhood is a blur. I don't remember how this happened to me. As you begin to let go of the cause that creates the effect of why you do what you do, then you are no longer the mind-body connection. What does that mean? It means that neurochemically and emotionally, you're not stuck in the past perpetuating the same set of feelings. You're able to elevate your energy above guilt. You're able to look at the situation for what it is. Guilt is what other people put on you typically. They guilt you. They guilt us. Society guilts us. We're guilted to do certain situations. We're guilted to say certain things. I really love her, but, well, that's what many people say, not to be negative, but, so the, many people have challenges being clear because they're too guilty to have clarity because they believe clarity is being direct. Clarity is not being direct. Clar clarity is being clear. There's a big distinction between direct and clear. It's a different energy. It's a much more relaxed energy. Clarity means no, and as you begin to know, you can type it, you can disseminate it, you can transmute it, you can feel it, you can send it out in the universe, you can be here, you can be one with in a no state. And as you begin to walk through life as a sage imparting wisdom, you're going to find other like-minded success seekers who know also. And it's those people who know that you seek to attract because these people do not require a lot of attention because they know. They're able to not only figure it out, they don't figure they know. There's a difference between figuring it out and, and being able to understand the situation for what it is. And in that kind of synchronicity, there's no separation between self and an outcome, self and result. I can't seem to find any good people. All the people I find quit. Well, that'll be a direct reflection of two situations, that about 80% of society is anxious in fear and doubt, and is not really committed to any level of transformation or change. And the other 20% of society, it tends to be much more opportunistic. And it's that 20% of society that you seek to attract and or collaborate 
or track your reality so you can create win-win situations where collaboration starts to take place. And it's in that collaboration is where the compounded effect happens, and that's where the mastermind alliance come together, one or more of like mind coming together for a common cause. Now, if, you're, if your energy is immersed in guilt and shame, you're going to attract your reality, people to violate you, people put you in a position, they challenge you. You're going to attract people also live in guilt and shame because that's a very low energy and it infiltrates most of society. So these people are easy to find. They're also skeptical, not by nature, they're skeptical by conditions. There's nothing natural about being skeptical. Skepticism is a conditioned behavior based on not being able to trust self or others. And these are the type of people also find the flaws in all the goodness that you're doing and being because they are threatened by you. Now, as you begin to understand this, this is an advantage. Instead of reacting, you respond. You won't feel guilty about succeeding when others are failing. And who do you even know who's failing other than most of the planet? Well, you shouldn't feel guilty about your own success. You should feel inspired about it. And then by doing something with it, now you can teach or impart that wisdom. You can contribute. You can share that wisdom. You can be the solution, not the problem, and you can live in the result, not the procrastination. And the better you get at this process, the more likely you are to attract your reality, one or two quality, like-minded, potential prosperity partners that you can collaborate with. Now, in that communication, that communication is very clear. It's not about intent, that's about purpose. As you become purpose-driven, as you become cause-driven, in that type of energy, now you create magnetism, polarization. To your reality, I attract quality, like-minded people that I can partner with. That's a very easy affirmation to stay, say. I've said it in the thousands of times over the years because I wrote it. I wrote that in the mid-90s as I was about $100,000 in credit card debt writing my own affirmations. Why did I write my own affirmations? To change my belief. Belief is a sense of certainty. If you're not certain about succeeding, then you're interested. And when you're interested, you're not committed. Because when you're not interested or not committed, then you're commitment phobic. And then it's challenged, then in that, that level of low self-esteem and commitment phobiaism, it's also very easy to relapse, to procrastinate, to go to the refrigerator, to use your old drug of choice be right back in what brought you to the dance. And as you understand and let go and separate your feelings from events, now you're elevating your consciousness. You're raising it up. You're going to attract other like-minded success seekers in a relatively short period of time because the energy has changed. You have changed. But it's going to be your responsibility to look for the signs and the clues. Don't kill the messenger. Don't, don't criticize the messenger. Be less critical of self and others and listen to other people's guidance, insight, and wisdom, then put into practical reapplication the compounded effect that will create the results. That, my friends, is how you break through. You break through by a term called massive action, but it's in the action you master the law of large numbers. And as you begin to no longer be the mind-body connection of the events, and you're sitting, in, you're, you're sitting in your chair and you're sitting there and you're producing, not only are you producing, but you're producing results. There's a big difference between production and production energy. Unfortunately, most people, they produce, but they produce very little effort, and they very, produce very few results because of their energy that they transmute. It's not conducive to any joy, bliss, or love, and that so many people are in a place called force. They're forcing themselves to do something that they're in pain. And well, I'll tell you right now, that's not a good situation. A good situation would be that you realize that you're starting over and your situation is temporary and you're willing to pay the price of success while you learn the skills on the journey. It's a win-win situation because ultimately it's up to you and not only is it up to you, but your company is going to provide you for a lot of great service, benefits, features that you'll be able to access through some of your own materials. Now, as you begin to really understand cause and effect, guilt and shame, and the level of energy that it takes to overcome guilt and shame. It's like the lowest of low energy. It calibrates all the way down at the bottom of the energy pyramid, and it keeps you doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Because guilt is a very intoxicating emotion. It's why you want to be very clear on who you are and what you do, and how you, use, how you, how you step into the power and step in and let go of 
pressure and control, which are illusions, because there is no pressure and control. The only pressure you feel is the anxiety you manifest and create because of your own worry, dread, and, and other challenges that lead to being in an overwhelmed state. As you let go and really move into that elevated state, now you're going to start to elevate above grief, apathy, but specifically guilt and shame. Guilt is one of the lowest levels of energy that you can possibly transmute a feeling. It's so low, in fact, that it calibrates out at, a, at about 50 to 100 cycles a second, meaning it hurts. It's a very, very low energy. And this is why you don't want to feel or stay guilty about outcomes that haven't happened. But start to monitor your language. Check it at the door and be clear if you're using a series of words that are disempowering or your words extremely powering. As you live in a state called power, that's esteem, that's love for self, and that's also the ability to create on command. That's, those are some of the people that you require to attract. Now, if you're receiving this content today, there's a book that will give you insight on this. It's called Money Drunk, Money Sober by Julia Cameron and Mark Bryan. Great book, Money Drunk, Money Sober. I recommend that book a couple of times a day, and I guarantee you that you will create a result by listening to that audio. It is really, really good. If you're on this video this afternoon, feel free to go to my website. There's a lot of added bonuses and features. We'll be really updating that website and streamlining it. We have a lot of great products coming out here in the next couple of months. And I will be seeing you in Spartanburg, South Carolina on October 13th with Bridget Bartley. And then on the 20th, I will be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania with Joe D. Bianca. With that, we're going to wrap up today's call. Jeffrey, or today's video, Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. You have a great day. Thank you for listening to the More Heart Than Talent radio. If you enjoyed today's content and would like more insight and education to the breakthrough process, you can get my new Breakthrough Factor audio training for free today. It's seven hours of breakthrough content to assist you to break through in life and business. This training is currently for sale on my website for $497, but I'm giving it to you for free as a bonus to persuade you to try my new coaching program called the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle. It's my proven system to teach everyday people and entrepreneurs how to break through to success. When you join the Jeffrey Combs Inner Circle, you will participate in two private video coaching calls per month that you and my other members receive access to. On each call, the first half, I'll be teaching the skill of the week and giving you an assignment related to the topic. You will have the opportunity to post your homework in my private JCIC Facebook group. The Facebook group is a place where you can interact with me, my Golden Mastermind team, and other JCIC members. On the second half of the coaching call, I'll be coaching JCIC members one-on-one -on -one live for you to observe. As a member, you can register for your own live one-on-one -on -one coaching session during this call. They're all recorded and posted in the JCIC members area for you to review while you are an active member. You will also receive a new member's welcome kit and my new Breakthrough Factor audio program absolutely free for joining. You can sign up today for just $197. This is no ordinary coaching program. Sign up now to begin your breakthrough process now. Go to goldenmastermind.com forward slash circle to get started today.